Hello, welcome to Excel Tips by the HR Diary. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the pivot table. These are the four examples that I will cover. One, how to create a pivot table. Two, how to add filter to the pivot table. Three, how to add slicer to the pivot table. And four, how to add a pivot chart to the pivot table. So what is a pivot table? Pivot tables let you summarize and manipulate data without changing your data. So how can you use pivot table? Let's dive in and see how they work. In this example, I have some company sales data with columns for staff, store, sales, and the month. So what this says is John worked in store A and had made 2,000 sales in the month of February. All right. So in January, he, he, he worked in store A and made 1,000 sales. So Andy, he only works in store A. Whereas Dave, he worked in store A in January, making 1,300 sales. And then he worked in store B in February and store C in March. So this is my data. So what I want to find out is what is the sales, the total sales for each staff. So as you can see, the staff has data in more than one row. So if I want to find out what is the sales for ND, I need to add this up, which is 4,500. And Dave, I need to add this up. His total sales is 2,300. Gwen is 2,380 and Mandy is 1,400. Other than doing this manually, the pivot table can calculate their total sales for you automatically. So in this first example, I want to show you how to create a pivot table. To create a pivot table, first you select your data, including your column headers. Then Go to insert, click on the pivot table. You will usually want to place your pivot table in a new worksheet, although you can also put it on an existing worksheet. So I want to put it into a new worksheet. So I make sure this is this is thick. Then I click on the OK and you will see a new worksheet appear here. All right. So I got a new worksheet here. I can shift the worksheet here. And I have my pivot table. Okay, once you click this, this will appear. Okay, so over on the left is our blank pivot table here. There's nothing here yet. And then on the right here, stretch this up so that you can see all the fields okay so on the right here is the list of fields these fields that was extracted from our column header so the staff store sales and month so remember here staff store sales and month so they appear here so this is where we control what we want to display in the pivot table you can change this view if you want. Uh, you can here, you can change it this way, or you can change it to fuse only or what, whichever way. So I prefer to see it this way. So again, I want to find what is the sales for each staff. So this question means that we need the staff and the sales fuse because I want to find out what is the sales for each staff. So we need this and this. So what you have to do is to check the box next to the field. So I check staff because I want staff and I check sales. All right. So notice that when I check it, it appears here and here. And we can put it back by dragging it back. So another way other than checking it, 
All right. You can drag it. So you can, I can drag the staff, click on this, drag it, and put it here. So the staff names appear here. And I can drag the sales, click it, drag the sales to here under the values area. And you will see it appearing there. So now if we go back to the pivot table here, we can now see the information that we are looking for. In it, remember my question was, what is the sales for each staff? So the pivot table automatically gives me the number. And these sales is 4,500. Dave's sales is 2,300. So I don't need to calculate it manually. So we, we can check, like Andy, for sales is 4,500. Let's go back to the data. If I select for Andy, the sales is 4,500. So pivot table gives you the data automatically. So if you want to know each staff's monthly sales, right? This is the total sales for each staff, but I want to know what is the monthly sales. What you do is you go to the month, you want to know the month. So you drag the man to the columns area, columns, columns area here, and release it. And it will add a column for each month of the worksheet. So you can see for ND, its sales is 1,000 in January, in February 2,000, in March 1,500, and the total sales is 4,500. So if you want to know the sales for each store, so to do that, Let's take out the staff and take out the month. You'll notice this month will, will be gone. All right. So I want to know what is the sales for each store. Then I drag the store to here. So there, there it is. So this is the sales for each store. Store A, the sales is 6,180. Store B, 2,300. And store C, 2,001. Hundred, So each time we change the fields, the pivot table is just combining the source data in a different way. So we can see the information that we need. And we are doing all this without adding or changing anything in this original worksheet. So you can experiment by dragging the fields into different areas, but some combinations work better than others. So for example, if I move the sales, over to the column section. Like if I move this, now you see this is a very neat table. So if I move this over to columns, you will see this, which doesn't give us any useful data. And if we move it here, again, it doesn't give us any useful data. So let's move it back here. So sales contain numerical data. So it's, it's best placed in the values section here because it contains numerical data. Next, if we click on to the arrow next to sales here and then click value field settings, we can change the function to something other than just sum. All right? For example, you can we can count the number of cells. You just click count and you click OK and it count. Store A, the count of sales is six. All right. So there is four here, four, five, six. Count. So store B, how many store B are there? Three. So store B there is one, two, three. Store C, one. Two, three. All right. Um, again, when you uh, click on this arrow next to sale and go to the value field setting, other than sound, you can count or you can get the average. And you click OK. It gives you the average. Or you can change it to maximum and it gives you the maximum all right so you see store a the maximum sales is 2000 so if i go back to my data store a 
the maximum sales is to 1000. Now let's set the function here back to sum. Cool. So I have taught you how to create a simple pivot table. Now in our second example, I want to show you how to add filter to the pivot table. Okay, let's get back to here. So right now, this pivot table is showing us the store sales total. Right, for all the stuff in our worksheet. But I want to remove, what if I want to remove certain stuff from the sales numbers? We can do this by adding a report filter, which can be used to narrow down the data in your pivot table. To do this, drag the staff field, this staff field, to the filters area here, then release it. Then click on the filter. When you drag it here, the staff, you will see the filter here. Then click on the filter that's been added to the upper right hand corner. Next, click on the option that says select multiple items. And you will see these checkboxes appear. So you can you can uncheck certain stuff or you can check certain stuff depending on what you want to include or exclude. So now I want to remove ND and Dave. So when I click OK, the filter will be applied. All right. So I can also untick one more Gwen and let's see the data. All right. So the number changes. Uh, maybe I select ND only and remove the rest. Oh, it's left store A. Why? Why, why is it store A when I pick ND? Because remember, you look at this data. ND only works in store A. He only has sales in store A. So when I filter ND, only store A appear. Right? So let's select all the stuff again and click OK. And all the star, all the store sales will appear here. Right? Now, next. I have shown you how to add filter to the pivot table. In the third example, I want to show you how to add slicer to the pivot table. So if you like how filters work, like what we did here, all right, you might want to try adding a slicer. Slicers make filtering even faster and easier by giving you access to filters in their own self separate pane. To add the slicer, go to pivot table analyze, click onto this, and then click on the insert slicer. All right, here, insert slicer. Once you click on this, this dialog box will appear where you can check the filter that you want. So, for example, let me check on staff and click. I check on staff means I want a slicer for staff. And then click on OK. And there you have the slicer for staff. Now, you can just click on the staff that you want to see with, without going to this filtering menu. For example, you can click on to ND. Now I see all the sales. I can click to ND. You will see the number change. Yeah, so ND only works in store sales, store A. So you will see the sales for just ND. And then you can click on to Dave. This is Dave sales. Click on to Gwen to see Gwen sales. And click on to Mandy to see Mandy's sales. So as you can see, the pivot table changes each time to reflect the data that I've selected. You can even select multiple adjacent people by clicking ND and dragging your mouse down, for example, to Gwen. So this data is for ND, Dave, and Gwen. So to select more than one non-adjacent item, for example, you can click on to ND 
And then you want to select Gwen. How you do it is you select ND, then you hold, press the control button on your keyboard and select Gwen. All right. So this data is showing ND and Gwen. So I click on to ND, press the keyboard and Gwen or Dave, press the control on your keyboard and press ND and this data is sales is for Dave and Mandy. Now let's select everyone by clicking on the ND and dragging the mouse down to Mandy. So this sales is for the whole, for everyone here, right? So if you click on this, you can see the filter. Everyone is selected. It works the same way. The filter and the slices is the same, works the same, right? Now, The fourth and last example that I want to show you is how to add pivot chart to the pivot table. Pivot chart are charts that show whatever data is in your pivot table. So now let's go back to here. So to add a pivot chart, go to analyze pivot table analyze. Go to this tab and then Look for the pivot chart, which is here. Click on it. Then you have this dialog box appear. Select the chart that you want. So there, there are many charts here. All right. So just select the chart type that you want. For example, let's I want this. And you click on to OK. okay let's drag this so you can see everything. Let's move this here. Now, any changes that you make to the pivot table will show up in the pivot chart as well. For example, let's see what happens when we remove the store. All right, when we remove store, see it changes. And then if we add month, to here, it changes again, all right? And if we move the staff to here, it shows me, what it's showing me is the staff sales by month. So here the legend is blue is January, February, March. So this is Andy sales in January, February, March. Dave sales in January, February, March. So you can see each staff monthly sales data. All right. Uh, let's see, I can even, let's see. When I click onto this slicer, the chart changes to show you ND sales. So if I, I want to see ND and Dave sales, I just drag it, drag these two down and you can see ND and Dave sales. So with a pivot table, with this, uh, if you have a pivot table, with the slicer and the pivot chart, we can look at data in so many different ways. So all without changing, we can do all this without changing this data, right? So I have shown you how you can create a pivot, pivot table, how you can add a filter, add a slicer, and how you can even add a pivot table, pivot chart to a pivot table. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching Excel Tricks by the HR Diary. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the HR Diary channel. See you.